That's so this is our inventory of all the rally fighter components. So what we're doing is uh, to improve, improve uh, efficiency of the build process, uh, make better use of all the space. You can see all these racks behind me here. Um, this is a bunch of kind of dead spots where there's nothing there. Uh, so we're trying to uh, make more room for subsequent vehicles here at the micro factory. We're also trying to create our blueprint for subsequent micro factories. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're trying to do here is organize everything in order of build for the rally fighter to try to compress everything down to the uh, space that we have here, the limited space that we have, so that hopefully, again, behind me here, we can open up some of these racks for uh, the other vehicles that will be coming online, like the motorcycle, uh, maybe if the next one were to be a bicycle, or for the tandem vehicle, whatever the next vehicles may be, we're trying to not only allow room to build them out on the build floor, but of course we have to be able to stock the parts for them. So what I've done uh, as uh, the lead builder trainer, I'm working with the sub-assembly team, and uh, to take over the micro factory program, I'm trying to tie all that stuff all together. The build, the efficiency of the build, and creating the blueprint for this micro factory here in Phoenix, as well as subsequent micro factories. So if we look here, what we're going to do is these are the fuel lines uh, for the rally fighter. So you would start here as uh, a builder trainer. You would come over to this area, start here. This is day one, step one, and you'd start working your way down and then work your way up. So what we ended up with here uh, is day one in this block of racks here. Day two is the next rack. Day three uh, is the third one down there. And then uh, that one's probably going to end up being a combination of days three and four. So again, you can see we've made every possible inch that we have uh, usable space by creating things like these custom racks here. Of course, we have the full fab shop in the back and uh, all of our team members are able to, to do things like this, we just kind of say, okay, make a rack to hold all the fuel lines both before they get prepped and after they get prepped uh, so that it's in order of the build. Uh, the engine cradle is hanging up there. That's a custom mount that we made to be able to utilize that space, uh, whereas in the past they were just kind of stacked on top of each other on a pallet, so not a good use of space, one. And two, um, you can see that they're powder coated, so to stack them on top of each other. Uh, lended uh, itself to you know chipping and scratching and things like that of the powder coat. Transmission's down low so it's safe for the guys when they're pulling the parts down uh, and then also again still keep everything in order of build while we're doing that. Uh, if we move down here, day two is where it got really crazy where we really got uh, into the fabrication and custom rack building. Uh, everything from just a kind of a simple pivot here uh, to be able to hold the control arms. You got this little pin that locks it in here. Uh, which keeps, you can see how it kind of bows there when the weight is on the um, on the post here from the control arms. You pop this back in, and then when this rack is full, what that will uh, allow you to do is have arms all the way out, but you don't have to worry about, because of the weight being on it, them falling off. Uh, the other thing, too, is this makes the post a little bit more visible. If we didn't have this post here, you could, like, hit your head on it. So you can see we're trying to cover all the angles. Uh, these upper arms will eventually get held in a similar manner above that. We've got the front shocks here hanging uh, after they're prepped, so it's easy to pull those off. Um, the uprights with the hubs, pretty heavy assemblies, so it's like we temporarily hung something there because this is going to get added to the top of the rack here to be able to hold the steering arms. So what we've done is we've made this rack, we designed this custom to be able to slide these uprights in there and hold them steady. Uh, you can see they'll be unprepped, they'll come down, they'll get prepped uh, by the sub-assembly team with the hub, and then you'll be able to pull these out. And again, these ones typically were uh, installed uh, onto a pallet and just kind of held there and they could bounce off of each other and it just wasn't a good method. So we, we designed our own rack to be able to hold that. All the front brake components, uh, lower control arms for the rear of the car, the upper control arms for the rear of the car, all of the components that go in are uh, stored below that, rear shocks, uh, and then it doesn't stop there. We're going to continue on to uh, create the inventory in the most efficient manner, even if it means creating custom racks such as these.